Welcome in. We're just going to do a fun little Northern Lights painting today. So all I'm going to use is one inch brush here and fan brush there. I got the, the bigger one, the number six fan brush. And I got the smaller painting knife today, the number five painting knife. And then for the paints, Basically just four different colors here. So for my uh, base color for everything, yeah, as you see, I, w I mixed up way too much, but that's okay. <laughs> if you have any leftover, throw it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the freezer, use it another day. <laughs> so the color I'm, at, I'm playing with today is Prussian blue and phthalo green. So that should be very pretty. Um, this is the same color, just with a little um, titanium white. And a little black over here. I may need more of that. We'll we'll see how far I'm, uh, how dark I want to get with that. Then I got some titanium. Or yeah, there you go. Titanium white right on there. This is just titanium white and black mixed together. All right, that's a that's about it. Okay. And then for the canvas, um, I just have eleven by fourteen size, and this is a canvas that already came. Uh, with black gesso on it so you can use uh, obviously any uh, canvas you want you can do like a really long one or anything or you can buy it pre-gessoed with white gesso and then you can paint it with the black gesso <laughs> that way you can get some really really interesting sizes and shapes you can triangle ones hexagon ones whatever you want all right so to get started here you see I, i'm just touching that just making sure it's not going anywhere so it's nice and secure on there so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover the whole whole canvas with liquid clear. So I'm just going to dip. I'm just going to dip my one inch brush in the liquid clear here. And I'm just going to dab around. The reason I do this is just to get a nice even coat. Actually, you know what? I will screw these ones in. I usually only do it for the bigger ones, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and screw those ones in there. Just a little added security. All right, and then I'm just going to go back in and crisscross. Now, this step you can do with either the one-inch brush or the two-inch brush. The only reason I'm using uh, the one-inch brush, two reasons actually, because it's a smaller canvas, so. I can get away with the, <laughs> just doing it with a one inch brush. Um, the other reason is because the Bob Ross basic set comes with just a one inch brush. So I wanted to showcase something you could do with that. The only thing you have to buy additionally would be um, the fan brush. You can do evergreen trees with a one inch brush. It's, it's just a little more difficult but it's a lot easier if you use the fan brush, so I highly suggest getting one of those. As, as Bob would say, it'll pay you great dividends. <laughs> That's my favorite Bobism. And then you'll see I'm kind of going back and forth, doing the crisscross and then just really, really scrubbing it in here. You really want this to be thin. Cannot stress that enough. <laughs> really thin coat if your arm is hurting you're doing it right first time i put liquid clear on a black canvas and it was it was 18 by 24 as well so it was huge and my arm was sore for like two days afterwards went on the message board and i'm like is this normal and they're like yeah 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 that's normal. I'm like, okay. So I'm telling you now, it's fine. <laughs> it might be sore for a couple days, but it's okay. You build up those painting muscles. All right, that's pretty much good. I'm going to tap just a little bit more over here. Just a little bit, though. Like I said, you do not want too much. If 
if it's too much, it's, it, it'll be hard to work with. Hard to blend on and everything. Just going back and forth there. Make sure it's nice and even. And then we're going to do a little touch test. So I'm going to take my finger. You, you can kind of hear it. I think you can hear it on the... But you want it to be basically bouncing back. So it should be it should be snapping back at you, and it should feel like like you just touched a greasy forehead. That's yeah. <laughs> we don't have any any better way of saying that really. But that's that's what it is. That's what it feels like. It's gonna wipe out the fingerprints there. All right. So now I've got thin even coat of liquid clear. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to wipe off the excess here on the one inch brush. If you do have too much, then just put paper towel on the canvas and then crisscross like that. You don't want to take the paper towel and wipe it off because then you'll get little little fuzzies. You don't want, you don't want the fuzzies. All right. Don't, you, there's no need to clean it off in the paint thinner. I generally do not clean my brushes with paint thinner until I am completely done with the painting. There's no need to. Just use paper towels. And if you bring paint, paint thinner up into a painting, oh boy, you, <laughs> you will destroy it. And trust me, I've done that before. <laughs> All right. So, just going to tap. I'm going to take the, the same old brush here. I'm going to take, um, and you, you can use whatever color you want, of course, as long as it's transparent. And I'm going to take my little mixture of phthalo green and Prussian blue. I'm getting a nice healthy amount there. I'm just tapping it in. Just The only reason I'm tapping it is to get a nice even distribution. And then we're just going to, just going to cover the whole thing. And I'm just using a little crisscross strokes. We're just going to cover the whole canvas with this color. Or have fun putting multiple colors. So like blue over here, purple over here, red over here, whatever. It's the, the it's so much fun to experiment with the colors in the normal lines. Like I said, just make sure it's transparent. So like as I'm putting it on, it still pretty much looks like a black canvas. The transparent colors um, for the Bob Ross paints are going to be uh, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, phthalo green, sap green, um, lizard and crimson, not bright red. <laughs> um, the only yellow that's really transparent enough is Indian yellow. Even then, like when you put it on, you'll see it, but it, it'll still work. The galaxy one behind me right there <clears throat> with the Stonehenge, that bottom color is Indian yellow. I'm going to load up a little bit more here. Now I am starting in the middle and kind of working my way upwards and downwards. But I do want the most concentration of the color kind of like centerized. Centerized? Yeah, it's a word. It is now. I'm going to put that on pretty, pretty even. If it's pretty much black in the corners, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to do another touch test. I'm just going to take one finger and boop. That's good. So you can you can pretty much see the, the colors coming off on my finger. If, the, if the, the color's not coming off on your finger, then you have too little. So put more on. All right, so that's pretty good there. All right. Now, this next step is not absolutely necessary, but I like to do it just to give it a little more pizzazz and a little more color because, well, let's face it, with the Northern Lights, it's all about, it's all about the color. You know? It's all about the fun colors. So I'm just going to take the same old brush, just wipe it off the paper towel there. Doesn't have to be super clean. All right, and then what we're going to do 
So we're basically going to have like a mountain scene and some and some evergreen trees, maybe some snow, a little water. I want some of that color to be glowing behind the mountain. So I'm going to tap my brush into a little bit of white. Not too much. Not too much. So about, yeah, think about that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make my behind the mountain glow, we'll call it. So let's do, let's start kind of in the center here and we're going to crisscross. Start in the center. And then we're going to blend, blend that color out. So this will be our water area over here. And a lot of this will get covered up by mountains and, and trees and things, but we have a little bit of that fun glow in the background. And it doesn't have to be perfectly even or anything like that. It gives you a lot of practice in blending. A little more over here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and Wipe off my brush again. It's a nice pretty teal color. And I'm just gonna go over it one more time. Just a little bit down here, a little bit in the water. Okay. I think that would be pretty good there. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put our Northern Lights in. So what they, they call them curtains. So that's basically what we're gonna be putting in here. All right. And you can use the, the, the big fan brush for this, the little fan brush, doesn't really matter. So what we're gonna do here, I'm going to drag out a little bit of that titanium white. Oh, there we are. Now you can see me. And I'm just going to kind of push it, push that paint with your fan brush. I just want to load the very tip of the fan brush there. We want a decent amount of that color. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint in those curtains. So let's start, eh, let's start right about here. And so we're gonna make little, little squiggly marks, kind of think about like S's. So I'm gonna start over here and we're gonna, we're gonna tap. Tap like that. I'm gonna reload. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off and then reload. Okay. And one little, one more little squiggly. Now, if you wanna get real fancy, <laughs> you can, Reflected in the water. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I don't need as much paint for that, the reflections. They're going to be nice and subtle, so. All right. Just a little bit. 
this a little bit will do. All right, so we got our curtains in there. And so since we've already got that transparent color all over the entire canvas, when we pull the white, it's going to drag the white and the color with it. So let's go back to a one inch brush here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start. I'm going to start from the right and go to the left. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to start from that water line. We're just going to pull up real easy. And just to keep it nice and clean, we want to like wipe off a little bit in between. So do it again and start like where where you left off basically. Just start from that water line and drag up. And you can go over where you just went to and it's no biggie. Same thing, go Let's drag up. Drag up. Sounds not required, but they're fun. So basically any area that you have more white it's gonna it's gonna show up here. So you see this this area had more white there. This area had more white. Same thing. So that's gonna show in the curtains. And like one more. There we go. Oh heck, I'll do a little on the bottom too. Why not? All right. And then you can also, if you want, go the other way as well. Drag a little bit down. Why not? Why not? All right. And then, of course, we got to get our reflections. So those guys too. Don't forget about them. Same thing, I'll drag a little bit back upwards there. Neat, oh, all right. So now we've got our curtains and you could even do a painting where you don't put in the mountains, you can just put a whole bunch of uh, like evergreen trees in the background. I've done that before, it looks really, really nice. I'll do, I'll probably do a tutorial on that too, but we'll do a mountain today. All right, so for the mountain base, I'm gonna go back for the same color. So same thing, Prussian blue. I'm sorry, I almost said zap green. Prussian blue, phthalo green. <laughs> there we go. All right, so see how I'm just dragging this color down, making a little little runway for myself here. Take the blade and choop, just snap off. Nice big roll of paint there. Or I can do a little roll of paint. You do a little roll, you just got to load more. Not a big deal. Okay, and let's see. Where do we where do we want our mountain? We want our mountain. I almost forgot a step. Oh. And again, this next step that I'm going to do, totally up to you. We're going to put stars in. We're going to put stars in. All right, all right. Take your fan brush, dip it into paint thinner. I know, I know what I said earlier, paint thinner, be careful. Dip it into paint thinner. Tap that paint thinner into the titanium white now the consistency you want you don't want it running down so if you if, if the the paint thinner titanium white mixture is running down your palette put more titanium white in it's too runny see how when i'm tapping like this 
I'm getting little splashes around the edges. That's what I want. That's what the stars are going to look like. And one thing I do like to do before I start putting the stars up there, I will take the knife and the fan brush, and then I'll practice and do it on the palette first. So we'll just take a little area. We'll just beep, beep, beep. I don't know if you can see that there. See, I just practiced on my palette first. So that's that's what it's gonna look like. That little spray. So you know, see you put that over your painting, there you go. It's gonna look like that. <laughs> Another good use for a clear palette, right? <laughs> all right, so that's all we're gonna do. So you're gonna have the painting knife in one hand, fan brush in the other, and you're gonna flick. Now, the closer you are, the bigger your gobs are gonna be, right? If you're far away, it's gonna be a finer mist, a finer spray. So I do about, well, I'm about like six, in six inches away about. So I start very, very gingerly. Very gingerly. Because you can always add more, but you can't take away. <laughs> Just be very careful. And again, add as much as you want, as many or as few. It's all up to you. That's a nice little area. I like that. Cool. I think that's good right there. All right. Wipe off your knife. And... Yeah, we'll, we'll wipe off the fan brush, too. Okay. <clears throat> so we got pretty nice sky going on here. And now <laughs> we'll go and put our mountain in. So I've already got that um <clears throat> dark color on here, just... Prussian blue and phthalo green, and that is on my knife here. So we're going to go ahead and, and put in a mountain. So let's up here, like right about here. And I'm kind of making little little jaggedy, jaggedy motions here. don't want to put my mountains too high up because I don't want to cover up too much of the northern lights. That's the whole that's the whole point of the painting. There we go. So as you can see now that I've put that mountain base color on, I'm kind of scraping it away. And I'm just gonna Do I want more mountains than that? Or I think I think that'll be good. Maybe just a maybe just a little little baby one right there. Just a little one. Okay. That'll be good. So I'm just going to wipe my knife off there. And then take the one inch brush, go back into that mountain, and then we're just going to take that base color and we're just going to drag it. Just going to finish off the mountain base here. So we're just creating a nice smooth surface for us. Makes it easier to put the mountain highlights and shadows in.
All right. I'm just gonna gonna blend that bottom up there and get that nice misty green color. All right, that's good right there. I'll go ahead and just wipe the excess out on my brush. So when you're doing this, you don't want to go, you want to get as close as you can to the edge of these crests here, just not, not actually get the crests. Okay. Good there. So we've got our mountain base down. So now we can go ahead and put in highlights. So I'm going to go back to my small knife here. And let's 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 just go straight white. So just like I did over here, I'm just going to drag out a little runway. And I'm going to cut across and get a little roll of paint. Okay. I I don't know, maybe it's because I'm right-handed. I like to start from the right and go to the left. Ooh, look at all that on my arm. Let's wipe that off. Okay, yeah, that's better. All right. So I'm going to start with this little, this little one right over here. So what you want to do for the highlights, you're going to line up this longer edge of your knife here, right up with the crest. And you're going to move in and move in. You see how my hand's like shaky, shaky, shaky. So I got a super shaky hand. So when I put this onto the canvas, it's going to grip. The paint's going to grip onto the paint. And then all you have to do is just guide it down and very, very gently. No pressure. No pressure. So we're going to... Boop, there it is. It's locked on. See, I'm holding it with like three fingers here. Just gently, gently holding it. There you go, and you get that paint break there. I just wiped off my knife there because I collected some of that that background green color. I'm gonna go back in and just do one more pass. See my shaky hand. Boop, there it goes. I'm just gonna give it another pass here. Okay, that's good. And I'll wipe my knife off. And we're going to do the same thing right next door. And again, this is just straight titanium white. You can highlight with a different color if you wanted to. If you wanted to do like teal and purple, that's a cool combo. Teal and uh, blue. There's just, there's so many things you can do. <laughs> Possibilities are endless. Same thing, just grip it on there. Oop, there we go. And drag it down. See how I got a couple little little skips in there? Those are cool. Those are nice. All right. Now we got the biggest, biggest mountain here. Same thing, go all the way up to the edge. Just drag it down. This is another thing that you can practice on your palette. I can't tell you how many how many mountains I've scraped off when I when I first started doing this. <laughs> this is uh, it's it's definitely one of the things that requires a lot of practice. But again, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes improvement. Always remember that. All right. So since this is a bigger mountain, I grabbed another roll of paint there. So I'm just going to go back in. Here, I'm going to do a little more. Good. 
and yeah see how i'm like going past where i blended in don't worry about it it's fine we're, we're gonna blend that that stuff out it's not not a big deal not a big deal i'm gonna go ahead and i get this tiny little spot right there i'm gonna highlight so little so i just went in there with like point of my knife there there we go <laughs> okay and then well let's make let's make a little more let's make another little little crest i'm gonna just take that and just swing it around like that and i just create another little another little peak there Really going on that side. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and. Oh, you know what? I think. Oh heck, let's, let's take a little bit more over here. There we go. Okay, now let's go in and do our shadow color. So shadow color, I'm going to. I'm going to use this gray that I have mixed up here. I'm just going to flavor it with a little bit of that green. Uh, let's use a little bit more. Let's steal some of that. Yeah, a little bit more. The key is you just, you don't want it too similar to the base color. I think, let's see here. Oh yeah, that'll be just fine. And I like to leave it a little bit marbledy like that. And then do the same thing, just, pew, just cut across. Get your little roll of paint. Okay. And let's start. This time, let's start with the one in the middle. So. For the shadow, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the crest here, and you're just going to boop, just going to drag. Some people find doing the shadow parts easier. Whatever works for you. You can do either one first. Do you? So see how I'm just just kind of dragging along there, and I'm actually. Kind of going going over and kind of borrowing some of that white and dragging it over with me. I do same thing. I, now this one's a lot smaller area, so I just have a tiny tiny roll of paint. Actually, that that area is so small. I'm gonna go in with that part of the knife. <laughs> yeah, real tiny area like this. That small part of the knife is wonderful. And I see, and again, you can you can borrow some of that white that's already on there and drag it over, and then it mixes with the base color too. All right, looking pretty good. Let's do the same thing up here in this small area. So he's got a little bit on that little part of the knife here. I see it borrowed a little bit from next door. Oh, we can't forget about our little tiny little mountain back there too. Let's let's highlight that one. A tiny, tiny bit. There we go. Maybe just a tiny bit more. Okay, that's good. And still got still got some paint on this side we haven't used yet. So let's go ahead and use that. Same thing, just go up to that crest and then shoo, just drag it down. Mm 
and do a little bit more of the color. Just didn't want that little vertical line there, so just kind of smooshing that. There. All right. I think we have some mighty fine mountains there. So I'm good with that. I'm just gonna wipe off my knife there and go back into my one inch brush here. And like I said earlier, we're just gonna we're just gonna blend a little little bit of this up. So I'm just gonna just gonna go in and and tap tap some of this overage that we got here. See how it's kind of turning it into this this green mist here. And that's good. The green mist will separate the mountains from from the next thing we're gonna do. And for this tapping, I like to go into, I like to go in the direction that the mountain slopes are going. So on this side, I'm going this way, and this side, I'm going this way. Okay. Pretty good there. I saved some of this water that we made. <laughs> or as Bob would say, you can always tack on another canvas underneath. <laughs> All right, let's 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 go ahead and I think let's just go into let's put in some little little footy hills here. So little footy hills. I'm gonna go back in to this dark color we have here. That same old Russian blue and phthalo green. Just tapping it in. We get a nice even distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, just make some little just make some little footy hills here. So just some nice little footy hills. Now for this, um, you can you can either hold your brush vertically and you'll get more bumpy hills. Or if you hold it horizontally like this, get more streamlined, streamlined hills. Let's see, yeah, let's finish that up there. Probably have some big trees on the side here, but that's okay. All right, that looks good there. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna highlight, gonna highlight that. So I'm just wiping off excess paint there. All right, and let's see, let's see. I think I'm gonna highlight it with that shadow color that we did. So that same old color, but with white and a little bit of black just to make it a little kind of grayish. So what I'm going to do, since this is a highlight, and to make the highlight color stick to the base color, the highlight color has to be a little thinner in consistency. So you want to add liquid white. All right, so I just tapped my one inch brush. You can see just the, just the corner there. Just tapped a little bit. And we're going to tap that into that color. 
and I'm loading it the exact same way, just happened. That way we'll get a nice, nice fuzzy texture. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start right over here and I'm gonna, gonna start on the top of the hill and kind of like make my way down and I'm pressing very lightly. Very, I'm barely, barely touching the canvas here. Barely, 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 barely touching. So notice how I made one little striation there. It's kind of going downwards. So we'll do another one here. That one's a little further back, so that one's a little lighter. But see, now I'm running out of paint on that part of the brush. So, using what I have left and just, just tapping that bottom area to blend it. And we're getting rid of all our water. <laughs> that is A-OK. -okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see here. I think, I think what we will do is bring a little bit of that water back. Let us see, you keep your dark area there and it separates, separates your little, little hills. I'm gonna wipe off this brush. You know what, I'm gonna put a little more Let's see a bit more how that right over here. Because I don't know how much is going to get covered up in the old trees. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my one inch brush here. I'm going to take some of this that I just made. We're going to drag it straight down. Make reflections. Boom. More water. Easy. Easy as that. More water instantly. There you go. We got rid of our water and then we brought it back. <laughs> All right. That is good there. So, so we drag down our reflections. I'm wiping off this paint. And then I'm going to go back in and then just very lightly brushing across five hairs and some air. And all this does is, is just making it watery. That's all. If you overdo it, you'll get rid of your little curtains that you made down there. <laughs> if you made them. If you didn't, then hey, you're good. All right. That is good there. Now, to finish off this little land mass that we made, we're going to put in a little water line. So go back to your knife there. And go back to your mixture of titanium white and paint thinner. Or you can just use liquid white for this. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to take my knife. See how it's like almost horizontal here. I'm going to zhuzh it. I'm going to push. I'm going to push that paint. Push, 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 push. And doing this loads just the edge of the knife. And that's all you want. That's all you want. And this is the part where we saw into the painting, as Bob says. <laughs> so I'm going to start like, yeah, like right here. And we're going to saw in. If it's a little too bright in an area, go back and saw it more. That's just creating just a little water line. It nice, looks nice and icy. I love it. And there's just a little more on here. And let's go to this, this area here and shush. There we go. And a little bit more on this last hill. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard with the uh, the rounded 
corner or the rounded edge of the canvas there. <laughs> Sometimes your knife goes bloop like that. That happens, no big deal. Just erase it. <laughs> yeah. Like that. It's fine. Now it's good. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Now I gotta decide where I want my trees. So we are we are almost at the end here. All right, I think I've decided. I'm gonna go ahead and since this has a lot of a lot of white in it, we're gonna put the base color down for our tree first. So I'm gonna wash this out. It's got my bucket of paint thinner and screen in there, so I'm just scrubbing it against the screen. The paint thinner is um, sitting above, uh, about like an inch above where the screen is. And then you want to make sure this is dry, so just pat it dry. Just pat it dry. Now the smaller brushes I will clean in paint thinner because they dry so quickly, but the bigger ones, the two inch brush, the one inch brush, mm, I don't clean those until I'm old. All right, that is good there. Save that for later. Well, I'll put you down here. And now we put in our big old trees. <laughs> so we are once again, going to go into, see, I'm hardly using any black. I will use black and gray for the tree trunks. So that's why I have such a, just a little amount of black there. So I'll go back into this big old pile. <laughs> your, your pile's probably not as big as mine. Big old pile there. Sometimes I like to wiggle it like that. When you wiggle it, you get a nice chiseled edge. That's what we're looking for. Looking for a nice chiseled edge here. That's good. Because the way you want to start your trees, your evergreen trees, is you, you want to start with kind of dabbing in a line. So now that my brush has a nice chiseled edge, uh, let's see, on the one side. So we're gonna do this one first. Let's do this one first. Let's decide how tall he is. He'll kind of yeah, he'll he'll go like above the mountain here. So let's excuse me. So you want to hold your brush vertically like this. So you can dab in that line. So we're gonna go uh, right here. Okay, I'm gonna get a little more paint. I'm use a lot of paint for this. And then to start our tree, I know it's I know it's very dark. You're just gonna start with the corner of the fan brush. So give give the top of your tree about an inch. Don't start your branches until then. And just gonna tap in just a little bit to start your branches. And you're gonna go back and forth, kind of like a zipper. I switched over to the other side of the brush there because I was running out of paint. And the further down you get on the tree, the more of the brush you're going to use. To reload there. So put your branch out, go back in the middle, beef it up. And we're, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of the canvas here. You can always start your trees out skimpy and then go back in and beef them up like that. And don't be afraid to make your make your branches full. The fuller you make your branches, the more area you're going to have for your highlights. But sometimes I see people make really skimpy little branches, which is fine, but it just makes it harder to, to highlight. So just keep that in mind. So keep in mind, this is just like, this is a base. This is the base of the tree. So let's go ahead and put a couple more in. The base color of the tree, rather. 
let's see let's put one let's put a big one let's put a real big one right over Oh, right here. Okay. Reload. And again, I'm going to give them a little space to breathe. And then start and start my branches. One thing also to mention about making evergreen trees, reload real quick and then I'll show you. If you're tilting your brush down like this, your branches are gonna hang down. We call them hangy downs. If you tilt your brush upwards, your branches are gonna go like this, like smiley faces which is very useful to know if you're doing reflections for your evergreens. Keep in mind when you're going through a mountain like this, this is this paint is going to be thick, so you're going to need a lot of paint to paint on top of it. See how I'm going back in towards the middle and beefing up the middle beef up the middle. Reloaded there. A little more on the side there. So these trees are like my anchor trees. They're kind of like anchoring you in. You do... Maybe another, another one down here, a smaller one. Let's see, where is he going to be? Where is he going to be? I think right there. One more tree. One more. Yeah, right here. Just a, just a little one. Just a little friend. Same thing. And you can put in as many trees if you want. If you want all of this showing, you can just have those two trees or none. It's all up to you. And the great thing is like everybody's painting is gonna look different. So adjust it to what, what you want and what you wanna do. You don't have to put these trees exactly where I did. You know, if you have like a really cool spot over here you don't want to cover up. Adjust, adjust. It's your painting. You gotta be happy with it. All right, now oh, he's got his friend here. This one's a loner, he's just by himself. That's okay, that is a-okay. His friends were over here, but you know, you can still visit them. Okay, like that. That'll be good. Yeah, just a little, just a little friend there. Okay, let's go ahead and wipe out the brush. I'm going to go ahead and clean it too, just because, like I said, the fan brush should dry so quickly. So I'll go ahead and clean it. Swish, swish, swish. All right. Same thing, just gonna blot. Just blot that dry here. Okay. Now, before I put the highlights in, go back to your knife. And then we're just gonna put little trunks in. And all I'm gonna use is just this mixture of black and white, that's all. So I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna load it the same way I did the waterline. So I'm gonna go in from the side and kind of zhuzh and kind of push 
push, push, push. Don't need a whole lot of paint for this because this is going to be subtle. So let's go up to, let's go up to this, this tree right here. And we're just going to boop, just touch, just touch very lightly, just, just gentle. Oh, this is a subtle, subtle thing. A little more paint on that one. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Boop. Boop. Okay. That's good. Just like I said, real subtle. Just want it to be real subtle. I'll wipe off my knife there. We don't need that anymore. All right. Last step. All I have to do is just highlight the trees. Almost done. Okay. So then you gotta decide on what color you want to highlight. Uh, well, I don't have many colors that I'm working with today. This is all monochromatic, so <laughs> I'm gonna go back to same same old color, just with white in it. So I'm gonna just dip my fan brush into a little bit of liquid white. I'm gonna bring some of that down, and I'm just gonna dab the liquid white into that color there. If you want it to look more like snow, just go straight white. Now for the highlight, I like to load it this way because I think it looks a little more natural, a little more fuzzy. That's good there. Okay, so then we're gonna highlight the boughs of the tree. <clears throat> oh, I got a little straggler hair there. Just cut him off. So basically you want to start at like eh, the top of the bow and just work your way down. Again, very light touch. Extremely light touch. See, I'm barely, barely, barely touching. Very, very gentle. And you know, some some boughs are going to be lighter than others. Sometimes you like to put a little bit on the top there. And if your highlights get too light on you, you can always go back in with a dark color and go back over it. I tend to prefer my my highlights to be. On the, on the darker side. I don't know why. Don't know why. And then you do want your highlights to be darker towards the base of the tree. Just because the base of the tree is going to be thicker, fuller. And as you're doing this, get up, step back, see how it looks from afar. If some parts are a little too, a little too light, I'll go back in and tap them a little bit more, blend them in a little bit. And that's just personal preference. How light you want your highlights, that's all. I'm gonna tap back in. Do the other trees. Let's get let's get this little one right here. Just just think of like the snow lightly dusting. That's what you're thinking of. Just a light a light dusting on the tree boughs. You want your sometimes when you're painting smaller like this, it forces you to be slower and more meticulous and be careful with what you're doing. <laughs> okay. 
this last tree here. There. That's good. A little highlight up there. tops of the very top branches there. Okay. I'm gonna wipe my brush off here. Make some of those highlights just a little more subtle. Blend in a couple Blend in a couple of them. It's also a little light for me, so I'll blend that one in. And there are a couple areas that are a little too light for me, so I'm going to show you what I was talking about. Where I can just take some of that dark color and put it back in. Just smush it right on top. Boop, 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 boop. Bring it back, bring it back. Bring your darks back. <laughs> bring the dark area. See, that's better. Of course, that's the, again, that's pers personal preference. I like the lighter, lighter highlights there softer highlights. Okay. Alright. Just a little bit more over here. Okay, I think those branches look nice and nice and fuzzy. <laughs> All right, cool deal. So there you have it. Just a just a fun little monochromatic Northern Lights painting. All right. Like I said, try try this in in different colors and different color combinations too. Like, how cool would this look with uh, starting with Indian yellow and then going into this this green teal color or teal and purple. That's my favorite color combination. So, so try it out and uh, let, let me know what colors you use. Alrighty. <laughs> we'll see you next time.